awesome race goes. The Betfred Derby Group 1 contest, British Championship. There's no geldings, Colts and fitties can run. None this year, however. A mile and a half. They're headed by number one, Adelaide River. One of the eight, no Brian contingent, Jamie Heffern. Two arrests. Can Frankie Dutori complete the Coronation Cup Oaks and Derby treble over the course of the two days? Three artistic star unbeaten in two career starts. Rob Hornby. Four is August Rodan for Ryan Moore. Five is dear my friend Andrea Anzini, one of the outsiders. And six, Dubai Mile. First ride the race for Daniel Muscat. To one into eight to one. White Birch, ten to one. Spreewell for Jessica Harrington is twelve to one. And Bahraini owner, artistic star, is fourteen to one. Sixteen to one. Dubai Mile and eighteen to one. Bar, but a rest is currently favoured for the Derby at four to one. <laughs> Sir Michael Stout has just won with Regal Reality. Sir Michael, that must give you great pleasure for a horse who's been placed in an eclipse once to win this race at the age of eight is, is superb horses for the yard. Yeah, I think he's won five Regal races now. He's quite, he's quite a character, but um, he's given us a lot of fun and I'm delighted for his owner, Peter Dunn. He, he kind of shows that if you've got that edge of class, he's always had that little, little bit about him, hasn't he? Absolutely, yeah. Can be tricky at times. So, so can you, Sir Michael. And but you I, as well. <laughs> I hope you won't be now. Six-time Derby winning trainer, you know more about the Derby than most. You have Passenger, who's not a typical stout Derby horse the way he's come through. Um, what did you make of his Dante run where hopefully he learned a lot? Yeah, very promising. We don't know if he gets a mile and a half, but we decided that we would take our chance. He's a horse full of promise and uh, he should have a good future ahead of him, but I don't know if today will be the day. One of his assets seems to be he's very different to his sire Ulysses, who, who blew out in the derby, but this lad seems, fingers crossed, a lot calmer. I, I didn't think Ulysses blew out in the derby. He got knocked over a few times in the derby and didn't really get into the contest. Mm. Well, let's hope you get into the contest today and let's... stout seven derbies. That would be something. Good luck. Cheers. Put passenger in your ITB7. Still time to enter the £100,000 ITB7 today and then get ready for two and a half minutes of thrilling athletic endeavour on this helter skelter track. The 244th running, a flat racing signature race, is just moments away. Here's another Aidan O'Brien horse because that's TJ on the left. I think that's Adelaide River. Just going back to August Rodan for a second, we saw Dubai Mile running on in fifth in that uh, Guineas. His mum, Rhododendron, ended up being best over a mile. Not many people talking about August Rodan, whether he's going to stay. Will he definitely stay? Oh, it's funny how Aidan managed to change the, the way that the, the group won at the back end of the season at Doncaster over a mile into being able to produce Juice horses who could come back and win over a mile because if you're on a Johnny, your, your honest opinion, you have a two year old, he stays a mile on soft ground at the back end of his two year old career. Does he get a mile and a half as a three year old? Yeah, I've no doubt he will. He's by yeah. deep, deep impact as well. He's a good, you know, influence for staying. I think he stays really, really well, and I think he probably wants a mile and a half to be at his best. He should be in the comfort zone today. Maybe in the Guineas, he was not in the comfort zone, got lit up a halfway, didn't finish. Today, it'll be all about getting him relaxed, you know, the first half of the race, just get him in a rhythm. I think Ryan will give him, you know, drop him right in, make sure he's flowing along and get him to finish the last two furlongs, which he didn't do in Newmarket. Francesco is fascinating about him in the paddock at Newmarket, likewise Adele at the start. You got a glimpse of August Rodan then. What do you make of him physically? I saw him close up at Doncaster, Ed. He's, he's, he's not overly big, but he's a decent size. He had a great attitude. That's absolutely key. And this walk coming up here, we saw Passenger a moment ago. Very smooth, very calm and relaxed. That was exactly the same as the Dante. Meanwhile, the horses made their way to the paddock. In the winner's enclosure, the traditional jockey's photograph, three jockeys having their first ride. Good luck to Kevin Stott, Daniel Musket, and also Colin Keane. He will get their caps in a moment. Asheen Murphy joins the party to the left there, and there's Frankie in the middle, ahead of his 28th and final ride in the derby.
Tense moments, Johnny. No, it's a great moment. It's a great it? moment. Ah, it's a great moment. Walking out here. Hey, listen, when you're a young jockey, this is where you want to be. Now, if you're on a fa fancy runner, you're, you know, you're excited, you're nervous, you just want everything to go well, you want to get to the start. The main thing is getting to the start. Big atmosphere here. Horses can get a little bit on edge. You just want them to get to the start nice and relaxed. And as soon as you get to the top of the hill, everything seems to quieten down a little bit. And then, you're, you know, it's just another race then. Here's a rest. Tony Proctor on the near side here. Like what you see? We, we've discussed so many times with myself and Johnny about jockey ship could be at the highest premium in this season's derby because there's so many in with a chance and a rest has an ability to jump and travel early that could be key now Francesca what do you make of these so they have all been stabled down, uh, saddled all in the stable yard down at the bottom. They won't be in the paddock that long, so let's spin through them. This is probably the biggest horse in the field. He's also quite a big price because he's only had the two starts. He won on debut and then a bit disappointing subsequently, and he was scratched at the start of the Dante, so we didn't get to see much of him there. He is a big boy. He is super powerful, and uh, today we'll find out what he's really made of. In behind him, a bit smaller and neater, very well put together type. This is the Dante winner, the Foxes. There's been a lot of conjecture over whether he'll stay the Derby trip. I think the stable are relatively confident. He's lovely looking and he's really super relaxed, which we like here. Now, passenger in behind him. Fraction smaller probably than the Foxes. I like the fact that he's pretty relaxed. He might just be starting to get a fraction warm on his neck, but at the Dante, he did pull a little bit down to post and a bit in the early stages of the race. He's inexperienced. He only started a race this year, won the Wood Ditton in good style, then they stepped him into the Dante, supplemented him there, they've had to supplement him for this. So Michael Stout is an absolute genius at getting horses here for the Derby. He's won six from only 38 runners. That is some strike rate. So all good with passengers so far. I've got a little bit of a gap, so come back to me in a second. Arrest is the most popular in the ITV7. Still time to get your ITV7 entry in and win 100 grand. Arrest has got over 30% of the vote. Who are you voting for, Jason Weaver, in the derby? Can I, can I have more than one? We, we, we... You can have a first and a second. Yeah, the first and the second is going to be August Rodin. Um, I, I, I will stick with Aiden's brilliance to bring him back. And I think that Ypiro has been forgotten about in the market. I think um, if you shop around, you can get one, two, three, four. We'll get yours in a second, Johnny, but back to you, Francesca. And Aiden O'Brien's got three horses in the race. This is Adelaide River. He'll be ridden by Jamie Heffernan. He was second in the chest of ours to arrest that day. He's a good-looking type. Don't forget, Wings of Eagles also finished second in the bars and came on to win the derby. Aidan looking for his ninth winner. Soft ground form, perhaps a preference for him. I'm, we'd be, be a bit concerned about the ground today. San Antonio, another one who won at Chester. He won the D stakes again. Has got the majority of his form on soft ground. He's a bit smaller. He's quite neat. He's quite nuggety. He's well muscled uh, type here. But this is the big hope from the Bally Doyle stable. This is August Rodin. As you would have heard already that he was uh, disappointing in the guineas. But the derby was always said to be much more up his street. And you can tell physically because he's taller, he's leaner, he's leggier. And he looks right up for the challenge today. I think we just have to put a line through the guineas where things didn't go right for him. The trip is definitely up his uh, up his alley. And it was uh, it was a group one win for him last year in the Vert of Futurity, which is normally a very good indicator for this race. Now, a rest in behind has just started to get a little bit warm. Look on his shoulder, around the girth, his stifle in between his hind legs. He's a bit sweaty here today. He was a good winner of the chest of Vars. However, look at the times of that race, and it was very much on rain-affected ground. Very, very different conditions here today, and he has got that wide stall to contend with. Now, dear my friend, this is one of the uh, Charlie Johnson runners. He's quite tall, he's quite leggy, he's a son of Pivotal. To my mind, I'm not so sure about the distance with him, but they've said they're looking forward to stepping him out over further. He uh, was eighth in the Dante, so he's got a little bit to prove form-wise. He's tall, isn't he? Andrea's only just getting the leg up from Charlie in behind. I haven't seen this horse before. Kate Harrington is just giving Shane Foley the leg up on Spreewell. He 
was an impressive winner of the trial over in Ireland and he had some good horses in behind him. That's Sprewell. This is the other Charlie Johnson runner. This is Dubai Mile 5th in the 2000 Guineas. This is the one that Ed Chamberlain fancies and he's often on the money there. He's a neat individual. He's a pretty horse. He's got good form as a two-year-old winning the Criterium de saint Clou. He's just getting his uh, his plaques pulled out there by Danny Musco, who's having his first ride in this race. Plaques come out so he can grab a bit of mane as he comes out of the stalls. Artistic start, only his third start on a race course. He's quite sweaty. He's up in grade significantly today. He was a very young foal, uh, born on the 25th of May. Military order, wow, he looks in good nick. He's Eddie brother. White Birch, just spinning around as he heads out to the track. A little bit sweaty for him. And Waipiro also, but that's not unexpected because he does tend to get himself a little bit excited in the paddock. Alongside me, Mohamed Khaled Abdul Rahim, the owner of Sprewell, who comes into the race having won the, one of the recognised trials for the Derby. How much confidence have you got in the horse? How much confidence has Jesse Harrington got in the horse? Obviously, he's a fantastic horse. Um, we're here with a lot of confidence, obviously. Maybe just a test for the ground with him. I mean, he's been soft all his life, so it will be a test for him today. But I think he will go well. I think he will go well. He's a fantastic horse. He has a lot of ability. And obviously, the problems and the battles and the challenges that poor Jesse Harrington has to overcome uh, have been well documented. There is that little bit, perhaps, of a fairy tale that many people are hoping for. Um, how do you feel about the whole emotion of the story that's involved? Well, of course, this is a huge day for Jessica. I mean, she's been a lot. She's been through a lot in the past year or so. So this is. I mean, she deserves more than this, I would say. So it will be a huge day for her, and she does every bit of it, of course. We wish you all the very best of luck. Come what may. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joint favourites for the Bedford Derby. Arrest and military order. Four to one each of two. August Rodin, nine to two. Passenger, good solid each way. Support, eight to one. Seventeen to two. Now thirteen to two. Sir Michael still bidding for his seventh derby. Of course, supplementary entry, but he also supplemented Chris Kent. The Foxes for Andrew Baldies, eight to one. And it's twelve to one bar. Arrest. Now co favourites of the derby. Nine to two. Take your pick. Arrest, August Rodin, and military order. Co favourites for the derby. And one of those horses, Military Order, is trained by this man, Charlie Appleby, of course. Won it with Massa and Military Order's brother, Adair. Um, Charlie, love the way he's going around looking completely non-fussed or uh, nonchalant about the entire procedure. No, like you say, he's paraded well there. There's one thing we were confident that, you know, whatever happens today, it shouldn't phase him too much. It's that sort of a character. He takes it all takes it all well, shall we say. And, uh, you know, parade's gone well. And, um, you know, the ground is definitely riding, you know, good safer ground today than it was. It was quick ground yesterday, and, yeah. but uh, William, I spoke to William, obviously had the runner in the first there, and he said, no, it's lovely ground around there, so uh, there, there should be no excuses. Now, we don't know how good these three-year-olds really are. They're still early in their career. What we do know is your horse stays a mile and a half. He's got the pedigree for it. There are a lot of positives. How confident can you be about your chances in this year's derby? As you quite rightly say, it's a very open derby. You know, there's, you know there isn't that standout three-year-old as we stand, um, but what this horse brings to the table is those attributes that you just mentioned. There. You know, he looks, he stays well he's bred to be a derby winner <laughs> and uh, you know if we can get the, the luck of the luck of the draw around there you know as we know we've got an, I feel we've got a nice draw we're rid of, with the right horses um, it can sometimes get a bit of a messy race at the top of the hill there but hopefully if he's in the right position he'll see it out well that's a lot of brilliant thanks Richie So they're on their way to post. At the back there, we can see San Antonio being followed down by August Rodan. I was fascinated, Johnny, to read Aidan O'Brien saying he wouldn't break glass the way he moves. Yeah, listen, Explain what he means by that. It seems like he's a lovely, fluent mover. He's going down there. It's hard to know on his slow pace. He just looks like he's going down nice and relaxed with the way you'd want him. Um, Aidan's probably seen more of him at home, and that's the feel he gets him. He's going to need to have that action coming around here because they need everything around here today. You know, it's, a, it's, it's the ultimate test. It's a very open race. And Who would you ride? Who do you want to ride? I'd ride military order. Why? I like the way he won in uh, Lingfield. I think he's, gonna, he's crying out for a mile and a half. I think he should travel there fourth, fifth, sixth in the box position. I think he's going to come there and he has that, maybe he has that turn of foot over a mile and a half. And I think going a mile and a half will bring out uh, a bit more improvement 
in him. And he's a, he's, he's a full brother to last year's winner. It's, it's always good to have a bit of breeding on your side. OK, so you're going for Godolphin's military order. Jason, let's see one more clue. When it comes in the Dante, do you think the race was a good one or was it a scrappy one? Well, I think we, can, we all know who the unlucky horse was in there. Passenger was searching for room, going left, going right, and he never saw any daylight. We, we probably haven't read enough into the fact that Oshin Murphy on the Foxes, the eventual winner, was keeping Richard Kingsco in a pocket down towards his right-hand side. And he will probably, on a speed horse like him, be holding on to the Foxes for as long as possible. And I know, Francesca, you're a big fan of the horse who flew down the Sands Rail. Yeah, that was White Birch on the outside there. He missed the break a bit that day and he kept gaining and gaining and gaining. I think the extra distance of the Derby will really suit him. I think he'll go okay on the ground. And I think the ground is a major factor here because a lot of the trials will run on rain-affected ground, especially those ones at Chester, won by arrest. We'll save the last dance yesterday. We saw her finish second to Soul's sister. But it's even the likes of August Rodin, a lot of his two-year-old form was on soft ground. So I feel like trial-wise, we have to concentrate more on the Dante. And I know the Lingfield race was on the all-weather, but I feel like I want horses here that have got speed, not that have shown great grinding stamina on soft ground. Well, that's, what the, that's what the top three-year-olds do. And, and, and you have to remember, this is the first time a lot of these horses are running over a mile and a half. So, like, to me, they all look the same. And the betting suggests that. Who is going to improve between six and ten pounds from their trials over a mile and a half? That'll be the winner. And you mentioned the ground there, Francesca. Obviously, Ed, it was quick yesterday, and the jockey said as much. We've only had one bit of evidence before the Betfred derby, but it was definitely kicking up a touch more. So the water went on last night. Dear my friend, in the foreground there has won Best Town Doubt. Might the Godolphin horse on the far side be favourite? Brian? Military order is favourite on the machine and just about favourite here on track as well at 4-1. to one. I saw a punter come into Roy Christie here and have £10,000 on August Rodin at 9-2. to two. He's tipped him into 4-1 to one to balance his book. Although he is available in the ring at 9-2 to two, August Rodin. But marginally favourite, military order, a rest just slightly weak now, 9-2. to two. Well, Ken Peterson has had a look at the horses, and Ken, it looks as if one or two are just struggling with the prelims. I think the preliminaries got to a few of them. Arrest was very warm, and he had to get out early. I thought um, Spree, well, he got warm as well. So, yeah, a number of these, the occasions, just starting to get to them. So who were the positives? Well, the ones that stayed put was calm. Military order, nice and calm. I thought Passenger looked OK. Santa Antonia and the Foxes, I thought those four were taking the preliminaries nice and well. Who wins the derby? I haven't got a clue, Rishi, but I'll put up military order, and I'll probably say the Foxes. Each way. Cheers, Ken. Thank you. I think up and down the land, Ken, people agree with you. It really is so difficult. There's two of the Bally Doyle horses. The Foxes on the far side, number 12, is the most beautiful, handsome looking horse. We saw Spreewell getting very warm. Jason Arrest looks really on his toes. These are such important moments. John Gosden watching anxiously with Arrest. Just jig jogging, we saw moments ago. Do you like what you see from Passenger at the back there? Passenger has handled himself really, really well. I like the way he wandered up. He just, when he cantered Byers in front, the same as going down at York, he latched onto the bridle. He was a bit forward in his hand. So up over the trip today is a worry. I feel like with Passenger, a lot of people have latched onto him because they hope, they think he might be the one that has still got a bit of X factor because he won the Wood Ditton well. He was unlucky in the Dante. He could come here and really improve another 10 pounds on only his third start. The funny thing is, Johnny, he didn't knock my eye out in the parade ring. He's not a horse that you go, wow, look at him. Unlike, say, military order, he's a big, impressive horse. Does, is that a factor? I, I'm, I'm probably a bit like that in Stouts as well. He kind of cre crept up on them a little bit. You know, maybe he's surprised. You know, I know But when he went to the Dante, they thought he'd run well, but he maybe is a horse that does a bit more on the track. Uh, and, like, he should have nearly won the Dante. You know, it's always good to see you're, you're drawn to the finishers that didn't get looking running. Um, but he is one that has a little bit of upside in him. And he's trained by a man who knows what it takes. And I don't think he'd put him in this race if he didn't think he had a real chance. But it's a very, very open race. Come an awful long way in a short space yes. of time since you liked him in the in the Wood Ditton, in the paddock. You know, he's physically, mentally seems OK, but he's come an awful long way through the ratings. Ooh. 
that's a big worry with the rest, isn't it, Mick? Yeah, it, it is. The Jay has gone up the track to try and meet Frankie. Just has gone there with a towel just to try and wipe some of the sweat off the reins and just help out. And the horse just got away. And Frankie has just let him catch up with the others. He's got Spreewell in front of him. White Bert's right in front of me. He's taking it well. Wipero, another one with a red hood, also taking it well. A lot of the staff down here to lead the horses round. Just a bit of familiarity. With White Birch, we just got a glimpse of there. The grey is almost white, as Richard was saying. A grey hasn't won this since just after the war, Johnny. Tell us about John Murphy, who's trained a champion chase winner at Cheltenham. Yes, you know, he's a good trainer down trains down south. Um, this horse ran very well in the Dante. Got a little bit upset at the start, which is shown here again today, and missed the kick. And he came from a long way back in the Dante, and he came on the outside. Ushin got that beautiful run on the, on the left side. This horse had to come all the way around on the outside. But you just have to watch him here at the start, because he has shown signs again that... You know, it's, it's, that's not a good sign for me. That's not a good sign. And can I ask you about the draw, though? Because he's drawn in stall two. He was slowly away in the Dante. And on, in two, people often think maybe a low draw is a good thing. But actually, if you're drawn high, you kind of get to that first rail on the far side quicker. And he, he could end up way out the back here. Oh, he will, yeah, and, and, and if he misses the kick like he did in the Dante, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be where all the rest of the jockeys put him. He won't be where he wants to be. Um, when they switch back up to the left, they go right at the start. When they switch back up to the left, he's going to be a long way back and need a, need a bit of luck and running. Jason, watching the exchanges, this is fascinating. The, the, the favourite's changing every second almost. It was a rest. It's now August Rodan again. Might not be for too long. The late money, though, is fascinating. It's for the Foxes. 18 to 15 to 2 and being backed on the exchanges as well. Hey, well, listen, when you talk about the professionalism and Andrew's come here and his team have come here with some, some short pri price runs runners that haven't done so well and some long price runners that have run way way better than the price would anticipate. Oshin doing his usual, likes to change the, the saddle, he's always forever checking the, the saddle and the girth when he gets down there. Back to Mick. Yeah, Oshin, this is a regularity, don't be concerned if you back the foxes. The one horse that has taken the preliminaries really well is military order. He is like an old pro. And he's a 9-2 to two chance military order. The Fox is clipped in again, reflecting what's happening on the exchanges. 15-2 to two into 7-1. to one. Then Passenger at 8, White Birch at 12, Spreewell at 14. If one was going to run well at a big price, Francesco, what would you go for? I was just about to ask Jason the same thing. He did say early on in the show that he quite fancied Waipiro at an each-way chance. I mean, artistic star. He's chosen two, however, up in grey. I think it's wide open. Is there anything people should be looking at? I'll tell you what you should be looking at. If Artistic Star runs well, Torito goes later on on the card, running off 95 in a handicap. <laughs> fastest finger first. Why are we not talking about the horse that finished fifth in the Guineas? Do you buy yeah, mine? Absolutely, and he, he for all the world will say, you know, he was second in a group one, uh, sorry, won a group one at the back end, beating a rest on soft conditions. He'll have no problem saying. Charlie was thrilled with the way he ran at Newmarket. There is that soft ground thing again with him. He was the winner of the Criterium, the San Clou on soft ground. He beat a rest that day. So there is a question mark over these horses that haven't experienced the ground conditions today. How will they cope? And the trip, plenty of them stepping up to a mile and a half for the first time. Back to me. A rest with Frankie de Torre on board. He's a lot more relaxed now. I think Frankie taking him away from the others was a good move. A rest looks set to go off favourite. Final thoughts, Johnny Murta, the importance of the next two and a half minutes. Well, for, for a jockey, this is the most important race in your life. You know what I mean? To win the Epsom Derby is the big thing you want on your CV. For a horse, it's going to elevate him up to, like, superstar. He's a superstar if he wins the Derby. You're a Derby winner. You're a superstar. You go straight to stud and... Life's great. And the jockey gets pretty famous too. And let's just let's just hope, I don't want to tempt fate, but after all the talk this week and speculation, it looks like the derby is set to go off on time. As White Birch comes forward, it's up to our big race caller, Richard Hoyles. So White Birch is in, King of Steel moving forward. Now he got upset in the stalls and was withdrawn from his intended trial. He's one of the last in, White Birch is edgy. White Birch in the stalls, the grey. The Betfred Derby field are all loaded. 
Longish hold, but they're sent on their way. Fox is not the fastest into stride there, just gave White Birch a nudge. Dear my friend, as the three from the inside stalls were a little slow. Passengers up there early with Dubai, Miles Sprewell, and a rest going on towards the outside under Frankie de Torre. Adelaide River is also racing handily. San Antonio just slots in there, just worse than midfield. So it's a rest that has the early lead. Adelaide River in second place. Dubai, Mile and Passenger. Behind these is Artistic Star, who races in fifth. Just behind them, Military Order in the all blue August Road and San Antonio just being asked to go and try and move closer towards the outside but having to be rousted along to do so towards the inside is King of Steel then behind these is dear my friend White Birch is towards the back and now San Antonio has gone on with things and in company with Adelaide River falls from an Aiden O'Brien 1-2 on the front end as they continue their progress uphill so Adelaide River San Antonio in second racing in third but three wide is a rest on the outside of Passenger who's got a nice trail in. Then towards the inside, Dubai Mile with the white face ahead of Military Order in the blue on the outside of Sprewell and King of Steel. Dear my friend and August Rodan are the next pair. August Rodan in blue and orange just ahead of the Foxes with Artistic Star and White Birch and Waipiro are the two at the back of the field as they now begin to turn downhill and race towards the final seven furlongs of the derby. Adelaide River and San Antonio on the outside arrests rider. Frankie Dettori had a word there with Passenger on the inside and Richard Richard Kingscott, Dubai Mile on the running rail in fifth, military order in the blue, Spreewell looking for a little bit of room, August Rodan just being manoeuvred for a position in company with the Foxes who's still quite well back as San Antonio just moves to a narrow lead. It's San Antonio and Adelaide River who corner first, a rest in third place. Behind these is passenger Dubai Mile, a military order, August Rodan tries to break cover with the Foxes as they make their way up the home straight in the derby. San Antonio on the outside of Adelaide River. Massing in behind King of Steel with Dubai Mile, passenger August Rodan and the Foxes down the outside, making their way with two furlongs to go. Adelaide River with King of Steel coming out of the pack, and King of Steel takes over for Kevin Scott. August Rodan trying to hunt down the leader, then the Foxes. King of Steel trying to see it out. August Rodan with a length and a half to find and continues to close. White Birch running on late. King of Steel still narrowly. August Rodan is relentless down. And it's another derby for Aidan O'Brien, his ninth, and Ryan Moore's third. August Rodan finally fulfills all of the talk. Won the derby from King of Steel, White Birch. Behind those spree, well, the Foxes, White Piero made some weight ground into sixth place. August Rodan, so woeful in the Guineas, so brilliant in the derby. Runs down King of Steel. What a run as he burst clear, and the two of them came away. White Birch stayed on for third. Sprewell is fourth, and then the Foxes, whose chance was compromised, I think, by that slow start. Behind these, we have Waipiro, artistic star, and the heap included Adelaide River. No final derby for Frankie Dettori, a rest behind Dubai, Miles, San Antonio, one of the next to cross the line. Aidan O'Brien does it again. August Rodan, he kept the faith, and the horse delivered and won the derby. Aidan O'Brien is unbelievable. Not only does he go level with Lester Piggott with nine derbies, but if you put your faith in him, he's delivered again. This horse, Johnny Murta, really is the collector's item. Yeah, listen, unbelievable. Like, sometimes you go there first time out in the Guineas, you don't really know what to expect. He always said the ground was too soft for him. Uh, he's probably not a miler. He's probably not a miler. He's a mile and a half horse. He got into a lovely rhythm today. The, the way he quickened, and in all fairness, he had to show a bit of battle as well because the second did not give up and they pulled so far clear the third he's the real deal he's a horse that stays a mile and a half really well and um, listen Aidan O'Brien just just what can you say look, look at the run of the second the way he gets through he's travelling so well he can make a bit of room for himself and he goes and he commits and he actually takes a length maybe a length and a half out of yes. the eventual winner he had that initial change of gear and then Ryan hunts him down late on and that was off his first return run for the second that's a great effort they made for an exciting race didn't they there were plenty in contention with what two to three furlongs to go and then King of Steel from nowhere absolutely bolts down the hill like you say Jason he made most of that momentum going downhill stole the march and then Ryan all he had to do was hunt him down and keep asking August Rodan for an effort and he kept getting it from the horse impressive performance on this round where he hadn't seen before the Irish first third 
third and fourth. White Birch running from right at the back of the field. But what can you say about the second? Withdrawn from the Dante when it went wrong in the stalls, has come here and run an absolute cracker for Ammo, who was second in this race with Mojo Star yeah, as well. It's a, it's a huge run. That man there, look at they point to him. So not only, Ed, have they got a horse who finished last and third last in the 2000 Guineas, one comes out and proves himself a sprint sensation, the other one comes out and wins the derby. Ollie had a quick word with Frankie there on a rest. He said the horse was all over the place on the track, and in truth, he was all over the place before the race as well. To Ollie. Ryan Moore is a derby winning rider once again. Ryan, firstly, just just talk us through the race. He was uh, he was tough late on. Yeah, we had a we had a smooth run. Landed in a nice spot, and I kind of had William and Frankie ahead of me, and always always confident I had them covered. We didn't go that, that quick, it turned into a bit of a dash. He was getting a nice smooth run, but um, he was still a little bit babyish going there. Always thought I had the race won and then just had to get into him the last furlong and he responded very gamely. He's, yeah. he's done that, he's done that quite cosy, I think. We know about the mastery of Aiden O'Brien. Johnny Murta said that some trainers wouldn't have even bothered running him in the derby after the Guineas run. Just how good a training performance is this from, from Aiden? Look, look, he's the only man that, that would do it. And I've seen him get horses back. They run bad in the Guineas and one, one other Guineas. How Roderick O'Connor's come to mind and a few others. He even qualified, she ran bad in the Guineas from one and else. Aiden yeah, can do things. Um, and then look, this horse has great pedigrees. He's always shown he's a good horse. And it, look, everyone does, as Aiden always says, everyone does a great, such a great job at home. Everything which moves to the end, unfortunately, seriously. Just finally, there was talk of him being a possible triple crown horse at the start of the year. Obviously, the, the, that didn't go to plan in the Guineas, but does he feel like that was at the sort of top end of his stamina, or could he get further and, and go and win a ledger? Look, we've always had a lot of belief in him. Um, I, don't, I don't know if the ledger will be the plan, but you've got a nice horse in them. Hopefully, we'll get a triple crown horse one day. Well done. So led up there by David Hickey on the near side, Pat Keating on the far side. A 15th British Classic for Ryan Moore, who has just been riding so brilliantly this season. And he'll now come into a big welcome as Aidan O'Brien wins a ninth derby. In the colours of Michael Table, Derek Smith, the Magnus and Vesterberg, George Van Opel, congratulations to him. Reputation well and truly restored as August Rodin wins the derby. MV Magna on the right there, who we've heard beforehand just talking about Aidan O'Brien's confidence, and so many punters just put their confidence in Aidan after what happened at Newmarket. And now they've come and won the 244 Betfred derby. Johnny, brilliant training performance from the winner, but also the second, Roger Varian. Uh, they had to miss the Dante, comes here. What a prospect they've got with King of Steel. What about the first two jockeys? How good a ride were they? Yeah, no, brilliant. Ryan is so cool in these big days. You know, he, he never gets flustered and he always takes the chance. You know, he goes inside, outside. Today, listen, it looked straightforward, but he had him lovely and relaxed, out the back. He cruised into the race. In fairness to the second, he, he, he got the run on the race, probably. He could have stole it. He, got, he went down the inside, got the gap when he wanted. He got the best run of the race, but you knew a furlong down when Ryan started getting after the, the, the Augustus Roland, you knew he was going to outstay him. One thing about Aiden's horses, when they get upsides, they never falter, they never lack, you know, they, 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 in the battle, and you just knew he was going to come out on top the last 150 yards. And he, he had him so relaxed on the way around, alright, you may would have been positioned slightly worse than mid-division towards the outside, but he, he was on and off the bridle, there was no sort of real rhythm, because you're trying to keep him, or in his training regime, keeping him quick enough for a guineas, and then now you're trying to relax him to stretch out over the mile and a half, and the horse has done remarkably well. And for the Coomer operation was an important winner, he was bred in the purple anyway, he's out of Rhododendron who finished second to Enable in the Oaks here, she was a star herself, he's by Deep Impact, the late great Japanese Daniel, it was actually Deep Impact's last chance to get a derby winner here at Epsom, so he's achieved that, and he could be invaluable. 
no, he's going to he's going to go straight back now. You know what I mean? They're, they're probably stepping back to a mile and a quarter. He probably might rock up in the Eclipse, and you know what I mean? A pacemaker on the Eclipse, he'd be very hard to beat. Also, so they'd like to, you know, he's won the Derby mile mile and a quarter. Would hey? Would add another knot to him? He would win that. And guess who is the sire of the second? Wooden Bassett, Kilmore. King of Steel, what a race that horse ran. Second at 66 to 1. August Rodan did not go off favourite, went off at 9 to 2 in the end. White Birch in third, you'll see later, and we'll review the derby through the day when we move to ITV4 before the cup final. Came from a long way back to finish third at 12 to 1. Most bookmakers were paying first four. I think it was Spreewell who was fourth. Some even paid first five. But here's the photograph of yet another derby winner for Coolmore and Bally Doyle. And that man on the left now going in behind on the left is simply a genius and John Magna I'm sure watching at home this is the race he wants to win more than any other and they've won it once more you can see Michael Tabor in the middle, Derek Smith on the left there with the orange tie. But see, they have all the great stallions, but don't remember, they've got the mares as well. Down through the years, they just have a collection of group one winning mares. And my wife keeps telling me it all comes from the damn side. So. <laughs> There's someone missing Luke in the photo. Get in there, Aiden. come on. That's better. Always looking to deflect the praise. And we always look forward, and Johnny's mentioned there, you know, possibility of coming back to the mile and a quarter, because had he won the guineas, it would have been the guineas, the derby, the St. Ledger, the Triple Crown. Now all of a sudden they'll be shuffling the pack and seeing which way they go with him. So uh, that will be a, a fascinating part of the puzzle. So Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore having the last photos of an incredible derby. Ryan goes past us, but let's speak to the magician, the barnstorming Bally Doyle maestro. That is the record-breaking nine-time derby winner, Aidan O'Brien. And Aidan, in typical O'Brien style, you're about to reel out a whole lot of names. Let's deal with you for a change, because you're in charge of Bally Doyle, and you have so much pressure on your shoulders. In your opinion, have you ever had a better training feat than having a horse just about tailed off in the 2000 guineas winning the derby next time? Uh, yeah, Matt, just before I say it, a good friend of ours, Eamon McElroy, is not that well in hospital and we're just saying, Eamon, we're thinking of you. He, Eamon walked the track here when we had Galileo, our first derby weather. So, listen, but listen, it's, it's great credit to everybody, Matt. Listen, obviously, first from John to send the mayor to Japan, a great mayor like her, for it to happen. And everyone is involved. Andrew in charge of him, Rachel rides him out, Wayne rides him in his work, Davy leads him up, and then all the people, John on the farm, John over the veterinary, Rory over the farrier, Chris, uh, Jenny, uh, there's so many people, I'm, I'm forgetting the name, all the people in Coolmore that made this happen because he's a total homebred horse, Matt, and it's all credit to them that make this thing happen every day, and listen, obviously, he came with a massive reputation as a beautiful horse, but he kept stepping up to the, all the markers all the way, which is very unusual, and he's totally unique, uh, he's out of one of the greatest Galileo mares by the greatest stallion ever in Japan. Like he's, like he, I can't tell you, he's totally unique. And Ryan said probably didn't suit him. He said he'd have preferred a lot stronger pace, but he said he had to quicken twice. So obviously, Matt, he's, he's so exciting for us. And I feel so grateful to, and so delighted for all the lads, John and Sue, Derek and, and Gay and Michael and Doreen and George and Emily and everyone that's uh, in, No, but I, I merely mean it. I know, I know. To you everyone, Matt, yeah. Matt, you know. So listen, it's a um, great pleasure for us to have every, anything to do with him, really. But just for a moment, Aidan, can we talk about you. Yeah. Can you go back to 2000 Guineas Day and when you left the track at Newmarket, how deflated were you? Oh, actually, listen, Matt, it was one of those days, kind of from a few days before it, it all started to go wrong. And, and like, this is, a, as we all know, it's a funny game. It has to go around and everyone has to get their day. And sometimes you, you control the things that you can control, but when the, the variables that you can control all start falling against you, you can't stop that. And that was the way from the a couple of days before to, we had him booked to fly out in the morning and then it all started going wrong then and every step of the way everything just fell against him and like we, we always the, the, the lads had the plan for him that he would do the, the three races and that's why we stuck the him. triple crown which yeah, is yeah. the 2000 guineas the derby and the St. Ledger exactly man and we knew the first one would be the toughest one because to do that everything had to fall right for him and everything went totally wrong but he came out of the race great so that, that was the massive thing um, every day Wayne riding the murky was just getting better and more confident and more confident like I say Rachel rides him out and, and Ryan gave him 
an incredible ride. You know, he was so cool. He knew the pressure was on, and he gave him such a peach of a ride. Aidan, every time anyone's spoken to you, you have all said I keep the faith what do you see in this horse at home that stands him out from all the rest yes yeah, so I, I suppose in February uh, uh, when Ryan rode him work he said this is very special in February as a, as a two-year-old so you could imagine what he was like then and, and his movement was so spectacular and sometimes horses lose that movement but his never and never changed the whole way it's the most economical way of going like his, his, his action and his temperament and his breeding but his movement is just incredible match you know so it's very different really looking forward could you pit him against the older horses in a King George what was your in the back of your mind is it going to be an Irish derby what's next yeah I, I'm not sure Matt but obviously these uh, type of horse that when we come here and if we have a horse good enough we often have a look at the Irish derby but like, obviously the lads make all those decisions we'll see how he is we'll tell the lads they'll talk about between themselves and then they'll talk to Ryan and then they'll make a decision but I don't think he had too tough a race today because it wasn't a strong early pace and uh, Ryan said uh, he had to quicken twice on him because he got there going too easy and then he had to go again so all, all those options are open to him Matt. but the good thing about it is the pace was slow and he was still able to come from where he was but that was Ryan like Ryan had a total free hand going out and he, he just let him find his own rhythm and did it as he wanted himself a record nine times derby winning trainer is August Rodan do you feel the best of those nine I know you've had a great sire in Galileo, but is he the best racehorse? Yeah, Matt, he was always the, the most special horse. And from, he, we always felt he was the most special horse that we've had in Valley Dial. And, and like, it's, uh, that's what we always felt. You know? Aiden, it's, it's prize-giving time. Thank, thanks. Matt. Thanks so much. Well done. Thank, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Always so generous with his time, and he'll join the posse on the winner's podium. The Coolmore Gang joining Fred Doan, who you can see just behind the trophy, who's the boss of Brett Fred, and Nicola, his daughter, alongside him as well, to give away the prizes. Here comes Aidan and his wife, Anne-Marie. Nine derbies, the most successful trainer in derby history, is now 42 British classics, extending both records, a racy first one with Galileo in 2001. Lester Piggott, nine, Aidan O'Brien, nine now. And for Ryan Moore, a third derby after Workforce and Ruler of the World. He wins on August Rodan. He's on elite, elite lottery. Three winners in the derby. It's a great number, you know. So. Joins the great Johnny Murta with three derby winners. And, and Davey comes up here. This is always a nice touch. Well done, the sponsors. They gave a grand, the sponsors, Bet Fred, to the best turned out in the derby. Nice touch. And Davey has led up over the last, gosh, how long has he been at Valley Dog? 20 odd years? He must have been there when you were there. When you see Davey leading you up, you know you're on something special. You know, you go up to a two year old maiden, and Davey's leading them up, you say, This is one of the best ones anyway. He leads all the good horses. Great lad. No fireworks this year, thankfully. But sparklers instead after the race. And well done to everyone at the Jockey Club and Epsom for making this happen. In very difficult circumstances, it must be said. Right, remember the football's coming up, it kicks off at three o'clock. Hopefully you'll dip in and out of the football and the racing here because, Francesco, we've got a lot to come. So we have six more races to enjoy throughout the afternoon on ITV4, including the Princess Elizabeth Stakes at 10 past two. Potapova finished second in this last year and will aim to go one better today. There are two races over the five furlong course. The first of these is at 2.45 and it's restricted to three-year-olds and it features the high clear owned Estate who makes a quick reappearance after winning at Salisbury last weekend. Then it's the turn for the oldest sprinters to take centre stage at 3.20. The Ian Williams trained Mockertill won the dash two years ago. Can he repeat the feat in 2023? And the bet Fred Lester Pigot handicap at 3.55 is a race that Sir Michael Stout has targeted in the past with some really good horses, including Stage Gift and former Sir Ledger winner Conduit, so perhaps no surprise that his runner Fox Journey is prominent in the market. So a feast of racing still to come, and next we'll look back in full on the Betfred Derby. Thankfully, no disruption before the race as Aidan O'Brien sculpted more Derby history.